welcome back to Tea and Forget Me Nots. I'm Rachel and today I'm going to be painting this front door. Here is my UPVC door which is a really common front door in the UK. There's lots of people who have double glazed windows also have this door. In fact from my front door I can see three other front doors that are exactly the same as this so it would be nice to give it a little bit more personality. The porch area needs a little bit of a makeover in general and that will have to come at a later date but for now we're going to focus on the main feature, the front door itself. Before painting you would normally sand something but that is not going to go well with this plastic front door so I'm going to use a slick stick which is a product for shiny or laminate surfaces perfect for something like this. Now there is some questionable painting going on and caulking from the previous owners that will mean that it won't be a perfectly crisp line around the brickwork or on the outer doors either, but we're going to make a big improvement, that's the goal. The first thing to do is to remove the existing hardware. This door knocker with the peephole or spy hole again is a classic feature for this kind of door. Perfectly fine, does the job, but not very exciting. And I have a much prettier door handle coming in the post, so I'm looking forward to that arriving. So first things first, to remove the door accessories before cleaning and getting this ready to prep. It should be noted that this front door takes a bit of a battering. The porch area is quite small, so if you've got shopping bags, then it bashes into the door. I also have a very enthusiastic dog and quite an enthusiastic toddler as well. So paint job on this door really needs to hold up well. First things first, get rid of all the dirt and grime that has built up on this door over time. Muddy dogs, muddy children mean that this is a bit of a constant process. It will probably be the nicest this door has looked mm, for a very long time. So to clean, I used my trusty TSP cleaner in a spray bottle. And fortunately, it was very easy to see when the door was nice and clean. Sometimes it's a bit difficult when cleaning furniture to see whether or not you're actually taking off the dirt or you're just taking off some of the previous finish. But this was a simple process. And after finishing with the white lining cleaner, I just removed it with, again, some fresh water. So we had a nice clean surface to start from. It's a good idea to do any painting when you're not in direct sunlight, as the sun dries the paint more quickly and it's going to be harder to get a nice smooth finish. So on this day, I waited for the sun to go around the side of the building so that it wasn't in direct sunlight. As this is an inner door and there is an outer porch area with doors, the door isn't in direct contact with the elements so it won't get rained on, but it does get sunshine in the morning. First things first, and I'm taping up the small window in the door with some frog tape to avoid getting too much of the paint on the glass. Taping something curved like this with frog tape is not the most perfect of solutions because of course the outside of frog tape is straight and this is a curve so it's a case of doing the best you can with it and expecting to have to do a few touch-ups or scrape a little bit of the paint off afterwards. A good way to remove paint if you do get it on the glass is to use a razor blade and some shaving foam and very gently scrape away at it. But taping it off, even though it's not a perfect solution, just takes away the bulk of the work that you might have to do afterwards. Painting white on white is unfortunately not the most visible or interesting things to see on camera, but that is the first and probably most important step of this process. And this is slick stick, which is sort of like a primer, but it's essentially what you put under something shiny to mattify it and give it a matte coating so that paint will stick nicely to the top. And this avoids having to sand. I've used this on my fridge, so a metallic surface, and it's worked brilliantly. And also over wood veneer that I felt was too delicate to sand. And something like a front door, I wouldn't want to sand anyway, given the choice, because, of course, if you want to change the paint or take the paint off in the future, if you've sanded the door and roughed it up, it's not going to have the nice finish that I had originally. I tend to apply both slick stick and paint in the same way. I get the colour on quickly and then go back and smooth out the paint. But you do want to do this fairly fast so that it doesn't dry and give you streaks. 
So my plan is to change the door knocker and the hardware on the front door. However, at this point of the process, the door handle hadn't arrived and I wanted to get cracking. But normally I would have waited until that had arrived to make sure that the holes in the door were what I wanted them to be before I painted. Because I would be changing the door knocker, it's a good idea to have that with you before you start this process because you want the holes to be in the right place, either old ones that you won't be using filled in or new ones drilled so that you don't damage your new paint surface or you don't have to fill after you've already painted. However, the door handle was very late in the post so I wanted to just get cracking but I would advise normally that you have all the holes that you need sorted before you start the painting process. I did two coats of the slick stick over a couple of hours and then you don't want to do any painting until that has been dried for 24 hours. To get a nice smooth finish I brushed it on and then used a roller to flatten it out and take away any brush strokes. On to the fun part of choosing the colour for the door. So a good idea is to look at what is around the door to choose a colour that complements it. So I've got a yellowy brick, so I've chosen Hampton Olive, which is an olive green, so they should pair really nicely together. Now if you've always dreamed of painting your door pink, then go for it, do exactly what you want. However, if you want to paint your door but you're not really sure what will look nice, then just see what is next to it and what will look nice with it, and that is a good place to start. And if you'd look for other ideas about how to paint furniture and the different colours to choose, I've got an entire blog post on the tips and things to think about, which is a good place to start. Hampton Olive is a really lovely green. It's quite moody, it's quite earthy. I think will pair really nicely against the colour of the brickwork and also the gold hardware that I already have. With UPVC doors like this, there's a limited amount of designs of door handles that you can get. In fact, they're all basically the same. You can just get them in white or black or gold. So there wasn't a lot of choice and certainly no interesting choices to change the handles. So I had to stick with gold to match the existing handle and paired my door knocker to go with that. And that influenced the colour of the paint as well. So this is painting on top of slick stick rather than the original door, so it applied the same as it would on a wooden surface. If you've ever tried to paint on something shiny or laminate and you get the sort of watered out, washed out look, then I imagine that is what this paint would look like if I'd not done that coat of slick stick first. I started by painting all the ridges and get into all the little details and then went back with the roller for all the larger sections once those were complete. It's a constant process of finding hairs either in the brushes, the paint, that's the downside of having several animals in my house and I wouldn't change it, but it does mean I have to be careful with hairs getting in the paint. If you see them when the paint is still wet and fresh you can either pick them out with your finger or with some tweezers, or if you notice them after the paint is already dry, you can very lightly sand away the hair and it should pull out and then just do another bit of paint on top of that. Fortunately, I've used this paint colour before, so I know that it will turn out what I think will be really beautiful, but this first coat was not doing it any favours. Quite brown, not very pleasant, but it did know that a future coat would change that. So for me, I've got this white frame all around the outside, so there's a good chance that you would want to paint the frame of your door as well, unless you want it to contrast with the new colour. So this is where I've got some interesting caulking up the brickwork, and I had the choice of painting a smooth line, but then having the white cork stand out, or painting over the cork as well for it to all blend in. Fortunately, the colour I was painting the door was not too dissimilar to the mortar between the brickwork, so that actually blended in relatively well and didn't look too strange. I needed a chair to be able to paint along the top edge, and if you need to stretch at all, it's a good idea to get a chair or a ladder or something so that you are comfortable at the height that you're working at and not trying to stretch and getting probably wobbly brush marks. Essentially, if your first coat of paint looks good, 
then you're probably putting far too much paint on the brush. It should look pretty horrifying to start with, knowing that it will get better soon. The second coat of paint is already applying nicely, giving it a really consistent look. I think this is one of those interesting colours that looks really different depending on the light as to whether it's got sun shining on it or not. And you might be entertained to know that after what turns out to be five coats of paint between the slick stick and the Hampton Olive, I at no point noticed those three bits of white plastic in the arched window. It wasn't until I had finished the final coat of paint when I saw those and thought, hmm, well, what am I going to do about that? Because of course they are embedded within the glass, which I can't obviously get to. So I had a choice of either painting over the glass or trying something to hide them, which you'll see in a minute. My plan of attack for hiding those white bars in the glass was to use some scrap wood that I had from a separate project and to attach it to the glass in front of it. It's a little bit thicker than the plastic around the edge of the glass, but if I was to have it as thin as that, it would basically be paper thin and would be very vulnerable. So hopefully this will do the job. Now people do get upset when I put a top coat on silk paint, which is the type that Hampton Olive is. It does have a built-in top coat. However, I think probably out of all the high traffic areas within my house, my front door is the one that is the most likely to get a bit battered, particularly at the bottom where it will see dogs, children, bags. So I want to give it the best chance of survival as possible. I used a satin clear coat. So satin gives it a little bit more protection than flat, even though I do like the flat sheen. Satin is a good middle ground, it gives it a medium sheen and a medium level of durability. Gloss is the maximum level of durability, however I do prefer the flat look so this is what I went with. And I did two coats of the clear coat. So between that and the built-in top coat already within silk, we'll see how well it holds up or whether I'll need a touch up in the future. The first two to three weeks is when the paint is most vulnerable to scratches, so I'm going to be extra careful in that time. After painting the wooden pieces, I attached them to the glass with some E6000 glue and secured them in place with some frog tape. And at the edges, I used a little bit of wood filler just to disguise where they weren't perfectly curved along with the shape of the door. I removed the frog tape after the last coat of sealer was on while it was still wet, which is the best time to take it off because if you let it dry and then remove the frog tape, there's a chance that it will peel off some of the paint with it. Then finally the day had come that my new door stopper had arrived. Now I hadn't seen this in person yet, so I was really hoping that it was going to fit nicely. I had measured, but you're never quite sure and be as pretty in person as I hoped it would be. I went for this gold dragonfly design. If you've seen any of my other videos, it probably won't surprise you that I've gone for a nature theme. Despite having already painted, it actually worked out pretty well and I was able to use the original hole for the peephole and use that for the plate where the dragonfly knocks onto. So in the end, there was only one hole that I needed to cover up and I did that with some wood filler. I did two coats of that and then sanded it back flat and painted over the top of it. And fortunately also the dragonfly does sit on top of that so it is not too visible. I made very small pilot holes where the dragonfly knocker needed to go and then screwed it in by hand. I'm really proud of this front door. I really love the colours, the dark green and the bright gold. And this is just the start of overhauling this porch. Needs a little bit of love, but I think when it's finished, it will look really lovely. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll leave a link in the description to any products that I've mentioned if you'd like to find out more about them. And also to the accompanying blog post, which will provide a little bit more and different information. Until next time, thanks so much. Bye.